mobilization. I know we just did the Theta Star review, so this isn't going into depth about trauma. He did all that. We're just going over actually immobilizing people tonight. So it's going to be a brief overview, and then we're going to do hands-on. So be thinking, because I'm going to need two volunteers. So if you want to uh, nominate your neighbor or your friend, go ahead. All right. So spinal trauma. 40% of trauma patients with neurological deficits will have temporary or permanent spinal cord injury. So when an SCI occurs, you will see signs and symptoms below the affected area. So that's why we do the hands-on. Can you feel me touching? And when you notice that the patient has any numbness tingling, then you kind of know where in the spinal cord we have injury or suspecting injury. If we see any of that, what are we doing? Yes, immobilizing, helicopter out of here, right? So spinal cord injury in adults, the most common, so they say about 48% is caused by motor vehicle accidents, and then falls. So what type of patients do you see normally fall? Elderly. Mm -hmm. And why would we have more spinal cord injury in elderly people? Mm -hmm. So then they say about 15% caused by assaults, and then 14% for the sports injuries. So mechanism of injury for spinal trauma. So positive MOI, most likely to have a CSI, is high speed MVC. So falls from 20 feet or more for an adult and then two to three times their height for pediatric patients. Sports injuries or other high impact situations. So we have these parameters that we stick by, but then you also have situation by situation. You walk in there, you see the um, damage on the vehicle or whatever situation could have happened, in the back of your mind you're already going, hey, this, this has a high likelihood of the patient has, could have a severe injury. Then the negative MOI, so impossible, they say, but there's always that slight chance. So dropping an object on the foot or twisting an ankle while running or isolated soft tissue injury there is a very, very, very low likelihood that they're gonna have any spinal cord injury. So uncertain, so if you're not sure, when in doubt, immobilize. So tripping or falling on the ground and hitting head, you could, you could not. Falls from two to four feet out of bed or wheelchair, again, with an elderly patient, you already have that mechanism there, they already have issues, they're more likely to have a spinal cord injury, or a low speed MBC. Has it happened before? Absolutely. Is it likely to? Probably not. But when in doubt, just do it. So you get to see color, you get to see color, everybody gets to see color. <laughs> so injuries to the spinal cord. Like other injuries, the spinal cord can be concussed, contused, compressed, or lacerated. All can cause temporary or permanent. So your primary injury, so the time of impact, the movement or breaking of the spinal column causing direct damage to the spinal cord, and then your secondary injuries, so that occurs after the primary impact occurs, so then the swelling, the ischemia, and movement of the loose bone fragments will cause further damage. All right, so why do we immobilize? We wanna try and prevent any further damage from happening. So this should be done on all patients who have positive or uncertain MOI. And when in doubt, immobilize. And if you would read the protocols for trauma for Berlin, it is already in there. When in doubt, just immobilize. So your manual inline immobilization, it can be done from almost any patient position. You should not apply traction to the head or the neck. Just in case you were wondering. So only enough tension should be applied to relieve the weight of the head. Okay weight of the head of the head from the cervical spine. After manual immobilization is initiated, you cannot discontinue until paramedics arrive and you fully immobilize the patient or you completely clear them. Contraindications for moving the patient head to an inline position, so resistance to movement, neck muscle spasms, increased pain, presence or increase in neurological deficits, and compromise of the airway or ventilation. All right, so how you would take um, immobilizing the head. So depending on what position you're standing in. So 
patients in a vehicle, what's the best way that you can get in there to hold C-spine for this patient? It may be different for um, any accident that you come on. So this one, you're standing at the side of the patient. So you wanna make sure that you're holding underneath the chin and then the back of the head. You wanna make sure that the head is not moving. You keep it in a neutral position. All right, so now you're in front of the patient and holding. And now here's when they're on the ground and you're holding. Any questions about that? Okay. So cervical collar. So ideally, how many people does it take to place a C-collar? Two. Do you always have two people to place a C-collar? Can you place it with just one person? Yes. National Registry, you need two people to do it. So make sure when you're putting on a C-collar, you're measuring to make sure that you have the right size C-collar for the patient, and you don't want it to cause any undue harm or pain to the patient, and you don't want it to compromise their airway. If they can't breathe with it on, it's probably not placed correctly, or maybe we should pad with towels, or we can't put a C-collar on this patient. Are there some patients that you can't put a C-collar on? What would be some reasons why you can't put a C-collar on the patient? Too large. Too large. What about your elderly patients? They can't move their necks. They don't have good range of motion. Who's the guy that had that weird spine disorder? Where his head mm -hmm. was? Could yep. I forget the name. Yeah, the trailer park. He's like this. So what would you do in that situation? Towels. Mm -hmm. And towels do count as immobilization. All right. Well, we did just not so, what is one thing that you are supposed to do before and after doing any sort of immobilization? CMS. CMS. Checking CMS before and after. If you don't, if you have CMS before you do something, then you do the immobilization and you have issues with CMS, what are you going to do? Undo what you did. Undo what you did. Make sure you document. Yes. Okay. And then we'll go over how to do the immobilization. So, scenarios. So you're called to respond to the above stretch of highway for a 26-year-old female, unknown condition, reported MVC. Arrived on scene to find a badly damaged vehicle that went off the road and crashed into a tree. So you don't know how fast the vehicle was going. Vehicle is crumpled around the patient who is conscious and alert. Appears to have a left arm injury complaining of leg pain, and you see that the dashboard is folded into her lap along with the steering wheel. So what are you thinking right away? Helicopter. Helicopter, yes. <laughs> Do you think this is a gonna be a simple extrication? She's gonna just be fine with maybe this left arm injury? She, she can walk away, right? No. So, how would you treat this patient once you get access? Are you gonna sp spinally immobilize her? What about some distracting injuries? Alcohol or drugs? These are some of the things that are going through your mind. Any thoughts? You have the manpower to uh, have somebody hold C spine, and then somebody else starts doing like a, a rapid assessment just to see if there's anything else that maybe she hasn't told you or that you can't visibly see. Mm -hmm. Do you need any additional resources? Get fire from mm -hmm. Especially out here, anything we're anything trauma, we're going to be flying them. So, uh, do we have a helicopter coming? So, this was a patient that I had. I was working station 12, and this lady was driving on the highway. She said that she looked down at her phone for two seconds and looked up, lost control of her vehicle, going highway speed about 60 miles per hour, and found the one tree in the like five acre area to wrap herself around. When I got there, she surprisingly, like looking down at the accident, she was conscious, she was alert, she remembered everything that happened. She ended up having a subdural bleed she just had a left arm contusion because her arm came out the door and then hit um, with some of the metal once the accident stopped. She ended up having, she broke ribs. I think she had a spinal cord injury, but it didn't cause any paralysis. The dashboard was completely in her lap. It took fire an hour and a half to extricate her out of the vehicle. And we were sitting on scene along with Theta Star waiting to get her out. She survived and walked away from it. All right, 
So, scenario two. So you arrive on scene to a residence for a 92-year-old female that has fallen in her house. She is sitting upright on the floor, alert, complaining of neck pain, and you see an obvious right shoulder injury. She has a laceration to the upper right side of her forehead, and you notice blood on the floor and on the bricks of the fireplace in front of her. So what are you starting to think with this? Yes. So what caused her to fall? Was it just a simple, she was walking in the house and tripped? Did she get dizzy? Is it anything cardiac which caused the fall? Is she on blood thinners? Is she diabetic? Is she diabetic? So it's not a simple walk in, oh yeah, so you, you just got a laceration, we'll take you to the hospital. There's always way more that goes into these calls than just simple little thing. But yep, age. So yes, we probably should at least put a seat collar on her. If she's already up and she's moved around, would she be a candidate to, okay, sit back down, we're gonna lay you down and immobilize you now? Probably not. But for Berlin's protocols, it's either fully immobilized or not at all, right? You can, yes. All right, so, like I had said, fall. Did she trip, lose her balance, stroke, heart issues? Cause the list can go on and on. Age, why would we con be concerned about her age? She's 92. <sighs> what could be going on? Is she on any blood thinners? Cause then you have more concerns because she has a head laceration. So what did she hurt when she fell? She's complaining of her left arm, but does she have any other injuries that could be going on? Is she alert and oriented? What other medical conditions do we need to know about? Things like that. Just in the last month, I had three little ladies, just to let you know, that <laughs> had blood alcohols of 0.20. And they were 80 Sweet. and above. <laughs> <laughs> so alcohol. And what's the issue with that? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. But just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were having a hell of a party. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't invite any of us. I just like to associate with little people. Little, little people. <laughs> they party better. <laughs> they do. They know how to do it. They drink. They know where they are. You can see anything. All right. Any other questions? Like I said, very brief overview. So the biggest reason why I wanted to go into just practicing some immobilizing because what season are we into now? Hunting. Hunting. And what do we usually always get in hunting season? Deer. Well, yes, deer. <laughs> that would be the holes. Nope. Yeah. So there have already been calls of going out about the lost hunters or falling out of tree stands and things like that. So that's why we're going to go over making sure everybody does know how to place a seat collar and immobilize someone on a backboard. Okay? All right. It's going to be quick and I would say mostly painless, at least for the person who's going to be on the backboard. All right, so who would like to be the volunteer? Good job, Amanda. All right, so I need three people. You're gonna work on immobilizing her. Okay, I have one. Come on, Adam. <laughs> He's just gonna kick me. <laughs> Sign the release form and I will get away from you. <laughs> yeah. Sign here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I'm not always that bad. Oh, you while you guys are doing that, I have one more thing. Just so everyone knows, there are cameras outside this building right now. Uh, now that went live today. Oh. Just so you guys know. Okay. Don't throw anything away in the trash can. That doesn't yeah. belong in the trash can. Okay. So mostly the reason why he has cameras now. I one of those. Camera. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So, All right, Amanda, what's her? They are live today. What's her? Yeah. My, my life. Okay. They've been live for All right. What's the first thing we're going to do besides BSI? Please, bye. Scissors. 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 Scissors.
Do you have any pain as I'm going down your body? I'm checking her clavicles. Good job. She did that. I was watching. Okay.